Hello people, welcome to BTECT. David here and I've got a comparison for you today. I've got the Honor 8X and the Nokia 7.1. Both very affordable, but at the same time very well equipped in the camera department. They're both in the 200 to 300 pound price range and it's really surprising how good the cameras are. I was really impressed with the Honor 8X and rated it highly in my full camera review, which is on the channel now. Click the tab at the top if you want to see that. The Honor 8X has a 20 megapixel main camera with Honor's improved AI system, phase detection autofocus and an f1.8 lens that's backed up by a 2 megapixel depth sensor for those HDR and portrait shots. The Nokia has a much smaller megapixel count at 12 but don't let that fool you, some of the best flagships this year have had the same megapixel count in their rear facing cameras. This sensor has an f1.8 lens, dual pixel and face detection autofocus and is backed up by a 5 megapixel depth sensor with an f2.4 lens. This camera also uses AI for scene recognition and is equipped with high quality Zeiss optics. So I've been out and about taking samples with both phones and in this video I'm going to go through the samples with you so you'll have an idea of which one suits you best. Because I think they're both very good and it depends on what kind of photographer you are as to which one would suit you. Hey, if you like what I'm doing here at BTECT, then it would be great if you could hit that subscribe button, double click the notification bell and smash the like button for me. Now let's get into this video. So where I can, I've been taking pictures at exactly the same time with both phones. So we have the exact same conditions when the shots were taken. The first thing I'm seeing is that we have more contrast with the pictures from the Nokia and I think a bit more sharpness as well. Look closely at the bricks on the building and they seem to be more defined on the Nokia. It seems to be a slightly warmer picture on the Nokia too. And something that I find strange is that the flaring is identical on both the Honor 8 and on the Nokia. The only difference being that the Honor loses a little bit more contrast when it does flare. I find it really strange that they would have the exact same flaring pattern because the 7.1 is using those Zeiss branded lenses. So in this shot, this is not a portrait shot, it's just a close up to give you an idea of the quality of the bokeh from these lenses. I think the Zeiss lenses on the Nokia give it a slightly nicer and more blurrier look. But it's pretty close. These two pictures look almost identical apart from the warmer tint from the Nokia. Again you can see the tint quite strongly here in this photo on the Nokia. I think that the Honor does a better job here achieving a more natural appearance to the picture. If we crop in on that tree then we should start to see a difference. The 24 megapixel sensor on the Honor should retain more detail when we crop in. But actually, I like the Nokia better here, and it seems to be just as detailed, if not more detailed than the Honor. Could that be down to having sharper, higher quality optics? For the portrait shots, that being live bokeh on the Nokia and aperture mode on the Honor, well, I prefer the Nokia here. It's much more accurate than the Honor. Although sometimes I've noticed that it does refuse to take a picture, even though I thought that it had done. And it seems to have a lot more trouble in actually achieving the depth effect. But the Honor can mess up bad sometimes, as you can see here. But the 8 is definitely able to give you a more blurry background in the portrait mode. For the Pro mode, Honor's got the Nokia beat in my opinion. We get 30 second exposures from the Honor and an ISO range from 50 to 3200. But only 4 second exposures are possible with the Nokia. Credit to them though, as they've revised the camera app and the Pro mode is very easy to get to and very intuitive to use. So you're more likely to actually bother with it but I like to do long exposures, so four seconds isn't enough for me. HDR works great on both, giving you some pretty spectacular shots. Although I get better results from the Nokia, it seems to be more capable of recovering the details in the shadows, as you can see in this shot here. Another plus point goes to the Honor for its versatility. The digital zoom is perfectly usable in the Honor, whereas in the Nokia, as soon as you zoom in, there's a noticeable loss in quality. For me, I much prefer the 8 megapixel front facing camera on the Nokia than the Honor 16 megapixel offering. Again, much more contrasty and I would say more accurate colours. It's not quite as sharp as the Honor, but I think I prefer that. Selfie cameras don't need to be too sharp. Before we get into the video modes, I want to say a big thank you to our sponsors Direct Mobiles. A great place to go if you're looking for a new phone. They have a great selection of the latest handsets, plus over 23 years of award winning customer service. Check in the video description below for a link to their deals or search directmobiles.co.uk. 
The limitations of the Kirin 710 processor inside the Honor 8X means that there's no 4K video, which is something that we do have with the Nokia 7.1. Max video quality on the Honor 8X is 1080p 60 frames per second, but unfortunately there's no form of EIS with the Honor. You do however get EIS with the Nokia, but only at 1080p resolution. Although you can shoot 4K with the Nokia, you can't shoot 1080p 60 frames per second. In fact, you can't change the frame rate at all, and you're locked to 30 frames per second, not counting the super slow motion. Both the Nokia and the Honor will shoot slow motion with a 4 times slowdown at 120 frames per second and 720p resolution. The Honor though has the ability to shoot 480 frames per second in a short burst, similar to the way the Huawei Mate 20 Pro and P20 Pro do it, but at 960 frames per second. If you see my camera review that I put out this week about the Mate 20 Pro, then you'll know that it doesn't really shoot 960 frames per second. It simulates footage shot at 960 frames per second, and there's a big difference. The system they use analyzes the frames of the video, which is probably shot at 30 frames per second, and then it warps the image to create the missing frames. It's really clever stuff. I'm sure if they wanted to, the Honor 8X could shoot at 2000 frames per second, or at least simulate it. But to make it look good, they've capped it at 480 frames. And let me tell you guys, it's pretty obvious to spot. Moving on, and video quality is obviously better with the Nokia because it has EIS, giving you nice smooth footage, not to mention 4K video. It's a shame that there's no EIS with the Honor, so if you want smooth footage, just don't move around, or basically get a tripod, which is actually recommended if you go for the Honor, and that's because of the light painting mode. This is one of those modes that most people would only probably use once and then completely forget that it's even there. Stick this phone on a tripod and point it up at a clear night sky. Tap the shutter button and you'll be surprised at the results. This is what I mean about the Honor's more versatile than the Nokia. It's got that nice big zoom range and it has more features packed into the camera. Light painting mode has different settings, so it can be used to capture silky water or traffic trails. So it depends on what kind of photographer you are. If you want the benefits of those high quality Zeiss lenses and like to record video, and just want a smartphone that's gonna get you good shots in most everyday situations, then go for the Nokia. But if you want a little bit more creativity to your smartphone photography, and you're not too bothered about video, then the Honor 8X comes highly recommended. So that's it from me. I hope this video helps out if you are thinking of buying one of these. They're both really good phones, and I've even got a little bit used to that notch chin combo. If you enjoyed this one, then please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and smash the like button for me. I'm David Wilder and this was B-Tech. Oh, oh, oh,